This is Twit. PC Magazine. Hmm. I never worked for PC Magazine. I read it religiously. It was the king of the computer magazines back in the day. I remember the the people who worked there and uh, the editors there were gods. I remember going to Comdex and uh, Bill McCrone was like royalty coming in. They used to have the uh, the big parties. Uh, there was a lot of money. Um, I can't believe it's 40 years, PC Magazine. Uh, yeah, Jill, you so wrote an 19... article about it. 19, oh, I didn't write an article about it. Oh, okay. But, <laughs> but we there's a big yeah there's a big celebration um, suite of content for the 40th anniversary. So PC Mag, PC Magazine as it was called then launched in 1982, and in that first wow. issue was an interview with Bill Gates. So the Who current editor like in chief just starting right. I mean he wasn't really Gates. early, really yeah. early out. Um, the current editor in chief went back and had an interview with him today, 40 years later, to see how he's thinking about things now and how the history of computing has shaped the world and what he's what he's up to, what kind of gear he's using. So that's a really fun article to read. And there's some other great content. Um, for example, a look back at 20 PCs that shaped the last 40 years of computing. That's a fun one. Lots of fun little graphics in there. And I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, the Amigo is missing and this is missing. It's a, It does have a little frame on it. This is like PC. PCs that were covered by PC Magazine, right. Right. Um, but still a really fun read. And there's a great piece of video too, where a couple of the editors went back into a storage room and pulled out some of those old issues from the eighties. Mm. And some of them were five and 700 pages long. And I they remember. said, you know, why, yeah. why was this? Why were these issues so big? And, and, and it had to do with advertising Full page and ads, not just baby. that the advertising was, was, you know, making money for the magazine, but this is how people found out about right. where you could buy no computing equipment Sorry. and, and yeah. add-ons for your personal computer, because there was no internet, there was no online marketplace at that time. So you had to, um, to get the shipping rate for a magazine for something to be officially called a magazine, you had to have a ratio of editorial to advertising. So the more ads that you sold, the more editorial you have to mix in, in order to get that magazine shipping rate. Um, and so this, this is why a lot of people don't know this about the history of print magazine, but this is why so many magazines back in the day were so fat was you, you needed to get that, that ratio of advertorial advertising to editorial. Right. And yet I think it's soup computer shopper, which had some editorial PCs, Zita Diff Davis, who, the owners of PC Magazine, spun that off. Probably when PC Magazine got thicker and thicker, they said, we need an even bigger format. It was a tabloid format magazine that was also inches thick, but it did not have a lot of editorial. Maybe they didn't mail it, or maybe they mailed it on a different rate, because it was just basically a... It was, a you could have a lot ads. of advertising. <laughs> Yes. You could, I think, I think it was like upwards of 60, 70 percent could oh, okay. be advertising. Like oh, it's a they, pretty high ratio. Yeah, they did have, um, but those those laws still hold today too for print for anybody who works in print. I came up in print, so I definitely know those those days of looking at pages and actually like laying out the magazine on a table and this actually is, having a word count limit to what you could write. I'm looking at this, you like? know, the piece, twenty most influential PCs. I agree, every one of them really a great read and what i didn't know is you've got every issue of pc magazine available on the site 550 yeah. issues so you can read really? the first one oh man that's so, and, and for people who don't know the history so the print magazine of pc magazine folded i think at the end of 2010 so it was roughly 30 years, maybe 28 years of print magazine. And now it goes by the name PCMag.com. Right. And, and today, you know, every now and again, I get an email from readers saying, you don't do as much high level nerdy stuff as you used to do. You don't talk about this really in-depth personal computing. And the truth of the matter is we still do. There is still a good amount of, you know, stories about building your own rigs or whatever, but we, we cover a lot more now because technology has changed and it really is for more people now. And, and the way that we use technology, the way that it's integrated into our lives 
affects everyone. So we try to approach it in a way that we can give advice, buying advice for products um, and how to advice for using those products to be applicable to everybody so that anybody could read those articles and really understand what they need to understand. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that's true. I mean, remember stereo magazines in the fifties, I mean, Dan, you remember it. Yeah, I remember it. These young, these young, not the not the fifties, but I. <laughs> but in the early days, it was it was about you know you'd play the eighteen twelve overture because the cannons would really test the RMS capacity of your amplifier and your and your, <laughs> and your big uh, you know Altec Lansing speakers, and then a after a while, it became more about content and less about the the speeds and fees. And I think the same thing happened with the computer industry. I, I'll, a little story, I. I don't think I've ever told before. When we first started doing Twit 17 years ago, uh, we, at first we weren't going to do ads, but finally we decided, all right, we're going to have to do an ad supported network because that's the only way we can go forward. Uh, but nobody had set ad prices for podcasts at all. So I, I, I called PC Magazine and said, what do you charge for a full page ad? And I figured, well, we're not as we're not PC Magazine, but but also your ad isn't competing with a bunch of other ads. You have to kind of listen to hear it. So I found out what their price. I cut about 40 bucks off CPM. <laughs> and that was that was how we established the price for podcast advertising. And you know what? It kind of held. Oh wow. So it was uh, as rule of as uh, as seat of the pants as it was. Uh, One of the things about PC magazine and the uh, things in that genre, and it's true today of of a lot of still a lot of sites and remaining magazines. When we talk about editorial content versus advertising, in a really interesting way, the advertising was content that I wanted to look at. I, this is how I got a sense of what was actually going on. I'm, I'm into uh, computer-based uh, music, uh, and I still subscribe to a couple of magazines that uh, for me, the advertising is at least as important as the editorial because I have a much better sense of what's really happening in that industry and an idea of things I might want to look at more closely. So I, I, I think it's hilarious that there's this, uh, I know that the, the rule is for very good reasons and for postal reasons that you want to have a robust national discussion and that's what the postage rates are about but the you know, i just think that one of the things i miss is leafing through and not turning pages past the advertising the way i do with the new york times magazine on sunday where really i'm not interested in the advertising i'm interested in the only in the articles where i was the it was both in the case of this I completely agree with you uh, that there is a, there was a certain merit in advertising in that case because it was something you wanted to know about mm -hmm. and it was a new industry and it was exciting and you wanted to know about these new companies and what they were offering and every single ad was just as important probably as the uh, as the articles. I think that's a really good point. Maybe that's exactly what advertising should be uh, in a way, right? Uh, instead of trying to figure out what people want, we'll do affinity based content and, uh, and advertise. That's, that's how we sell our ads. You know. And the important part is to keep it straight, which is which to, so that, yes. and, and not to merge the two. Yes. And PC magazine has had a very good record of doing very honest good. editorial, yes. uh, and sometimes labeling becomes an issue, but the, you know, I want both. Yeah. No, in fact, uh, I learned, you know, from the best when we, I worked for Ziff Davis for a while, never wrote for PC Magazine, but I worked for them and, uh, and Bill McCrone and uh, Lance Ulanoff and Jim Ladderback and their ethical standards, uh, you know, at Ziff Davis Television and, uh, and everything they did were so high and that's the standard we want to keep. I remember Jim going around the studio and putting black tape over all the brand names of the <laughs> product in the studio. So so it wouldn't become an ad for that product or this product or that product. Uh, I'll tell you another another big benefit of working from home is you don't overhear people at the water cooler talking about what ads right. sold or right. how much money was made off of something. Because every now and then it would happen. You'd be like, oh, God, I don't want to. Uh, yeah. I don't want to know. Don't tell me that. I, I remember and, uh, uh, 
we were going to do an a, a segment on the screensavers about how to hack the Xbox. <laughs> and uh, Microsoft was a massive advertiser at the time on, uh, on uh, ZDTV. And I think reasonably, we might have been a little over concerned, but we said, you know, we just want to let you know we're going to do this. And Microsoft is not going to like it. And to their credit, they, the editorial people and the ad people said, no, no, do it. Uh, you know, it's important. It's journalism. And uh, we'll deal with the, uh, the blowback. And there was a lot of blowback. <laughs> uh, I think Microsoft maybe. In fact, that I can remember that that happened with some magazines, too, where Microsoft said, all right, well, that's it. No more ads. But, you know, when you're PC magazine, <laughs> nobody's going to say, no, we're not going to buy ads.